Good morning. I'm Ted Bernard. On behalf of the Rosenberg family, it's my honor to welcome you to this memorial for their daughter, Celinda Rosenberg. They regret that the majority of their friends and their extended family are not able to be here in person. As the coronavirus continues to shape shift and no more, nowhere near enough people have been vaccinated, we've had no choice but to live with the hard reality of a distance, mostly virtual and hugless occasion. Willem, Kate and Derek look forward to the day, hopefully soon, when hugs can be gladly shared with everyone. We gather this morning, each of us bearing a big burden of sorrow at the tragic loss of a daughter, a sister, a granddaughter, a cousin, a friend, a mate, so early in her life. By definition, there's no getting away from it. A memorial, a memorial is a sorrowful occasion. We grieve, we suffer, we cry, and in the process we come face to face with our own mortality. Because we are human, because of our luminous capacity for love, in times like this, we find ourselves grappling with unspeakable pain that will just not subside. How could it be that this beautiful, vibrant young woman is gone? Not exactly gone. Our beloved Celinda is in many senses still present here this morning, present in the small and large moments she shared with us, the way she imprinted those who loved her, who taught her, who beat back fires with her, who played music or sang or swam with her. Almost everyone can remember and articulate these moments, for Celinda was unforgettable. So much so that an OSU professor who teaches 600 students every semester clearly remembered her vibrancy and engagement as a freshman student in intro chemistry at eight o'clock in the morning. Among the masses in the teaching life of this professor, Celinda stood out. And this is exactly how she moved through life. How, without trying, she was boundlessly inspiring, insatiably curious, upbeat and joyous. So along with the heavy pain we feel, we are also oddly capable of finding comfort in remembering and sharing stories of a deceased person. Stories about Celinda's love and laughter, ingenuity and brilliance, warmth and kindness, and her very own version of a life dedicated to a better world. So this morning in celebrating her this way, our hope is that we can go forth from this solemn and indeed very sad day, inspired by her life. For this is the gift her parents feel certain she would want, she would have wanted to bestow upon us on this, the 21st anniversary of her birth. Now, before members of her family and others step up to share their own memories, I want to read an excerpt from her obituary as released a few days ago. The full version is on www.neverforget.com and the Columbus Dispatch and Athens Messenger. Celinda Downey Rosenberg passed away on March 25, 2021, the result of injuries sustained while working on a prescribed fire at the Richland Furnace State Forest in Jackson County, Ohio. She died doing what she loved. Her last gift to the world was to grant life to others through the donation of her organs. And I can now tell you that having successful transplants Several unknown recipients are now able to move forward in their lives thanks to Celinda. She was born on April 10, 2000 in Lancaster, Ohio, but grew up a barefoot explorer in the woods of and around the Rosenberg farm near Amesville. From birth, she was a spirited child who confronted the world on her own terms. She received her K through high school education in Athens City Schools, and after two years at Ohio State last fall, she attended a Women Wildlands firefighting course in Washington State and was subsequently ac accepted to the best fire science program in the country at the University of Idaho, 
with a generous scholarship to finish her training. She was to have started that program in August. In the meantime, she had been working for the Ohio Division of Forestry, based at Zaleski State Forest, but seconded to other ODF sites and Wayne National Forest whenever prescribed burns were scheduled. So Linda lived her life with an inspiring liberation, enjoying her days to the fullest, making other people laugh, and becoming a hero to her community. She was a musician playing the guitar, fiddle, and trumpet. But mostly, she sang, announcing her presence before she arrived and gracing quiet moments with her joyful voice. She was survived by her parents, Willem Rosenberg and Kate Kelly, her brother, Derek Rosenberg, her Darwin parents, Mary Nosick and Jeff Baker, her grandmother, Carol Kelly, her partner, Kays Van Dyke, and a raft of aunts, uncles, cousins, and many dear friends. I'm Elian Rosenberg, Linda's aunt, and I bring a message from the Netherlands from our very dear family member, known to all of us as Gaki. Dear Willem, Kate, and Dirk, it is very difficult for me to find the words to express the deep sadness for the loss of your beloved daughter and sister. My heart and thoughts go out to you, and I wish I could be with you today. Celinda was radiant with her beautiful eyes, her modesty, and at the same time, very determined. She and I had a magic together from the first day I saw her. For me, the news of Celinda's loss is heartbreaking beyond words. We all will miss her dearly, Bahrain and I wish you all the strength to cope with this terrible loss. The following words of Mary Elizabeth Fry may give you some comfort. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there. I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond glints on snow. I am the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I am the swift uplifting rush of quiet birds in circled flight. I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not there, did not die. I just wanted to add a note of my own. T. Barry Brazelton claims that it is those hours of unsupervised play where children must organize and negotiate amongst themselves that are the key to adult happiness. When the four stair-step cousins were together, this was most often the order of the day. Even though Lindy was the youngest, she was certainly not simply a follower. Her inventive and brave spirit was often the initiator to many an adventure. Thank you, Lindy, for being responsible for those happy memories. Good morning. My name is Judy Millison, and I am Amy's mom. I met Celinda the summer before her eighth grade year at a band camp breakfast table. And on that day, our families embarked on a collective journey filled with music, friendship, and love. Kate, Willem, and Dirk, although I am unable to be physically present today, I hope you know I am holding you close in my heart. 
When I sat down to write these remarks, I thought for sure I would have a deep well of experiences from which to draw, and that it would be hard for me to sort out which memories to highlight and which would simply live forever in my heart. And while so many moments have flashed through my mind, the majority of which broadcasting Celinda's vibrant smile, silly facial expressions, deeply inquisitive eyes, or the infectious sound of her laughter, the details are fuzzy. And I kept thinking, how could the details be fuzzy? How could it be that my memories of this young woman who was so important to my daughter and seemingly always around be fuzzy? Yes, of course, I, like all of you, are grieving her death. And surely that has some impact on my memory, but I don't think grief alone can explain the gap. As I thought more about what might be going on, I kept coming back to an article I read probably 18 years ago about how to parent your kids when they were fighting. Basically, the advice was, do not intervene. Of course, the author encouraged parents to be mindful of the potential for physical harm, but reminded me that our siblings are our first and the most enduring of all of our personal relationships. We learn how to share and squabble, forgive and love with our siblings. And we do so with the knowledge or belief that our siblings will always be there, that they are our family and we can try out all the things we learn, experience and feel with our siblings because we somehow feel confident that they will always be there. The article helped me to recognize that all too often, the substance of an argument is somewhat trivial. And with the proper guidance, our children can learn to effectively solve problems on their own. As parents, our responsibility is to teach our children the skills they need to resolve conflict. So that when we watch our children use those skills to de-escalate heated moments in positive ways, our attention shifts from the substance of the argument to the celebration or acknowledgement or recognition and even pride that our children have learned to be respectful and loving during a disagreement. So you might be asking, how is this relevant to the purpose for which we are gathered today? Well, Celinda was my daughter's first love. Not a romantic love, but rather a deeply intimate, unconditional love, a love that can only be shared by the very best of friends. A love anchored by a commitment to always be there for one another and grounded in a deep appreciation for how each would enrich the other's life. A love that taught them so much and guided them through so many firsts their first foray into families that were not their own, their first attempts to blend divergent interests, friend groups, and differing perspectives, the first time they shared, discussed, and explored what they were feeling with someone outside their immediate family, and the first time they learned what it means to be vulnerable and to truly trust another person. A love that helped them to navigate heartbreak bounce back after failure, and celebrate an endless array of good news moments. A love that gave them confidence when they were anxious, took the weight off when they felt overwhelmed, and protected them when they felt vulnerable. A love that was free from judgment, full of hugs, replete with inside jokes and innuendo, and grounded in the deep desire to make each other happy. Whether inches apart or miles away, they always knew they were on each other's minds. As I watched my daughter push the boundaries of her youth and take her first step, steps toward adulthood, I was comforted to know that Celinda was at her side. I remember turning to Kate, no doubt, under the scorching sum of, sun of some band event, while watching our daughters chatter and giggle and huddle, huddle and hug. I said to her how glad I was that Amy's first intimate relationship was with Celinda. And after she thought about it for a minute, I remember Kate turning to me and saying that she too was glad that Celinda was experiencing her first intimate relationship with Amy. We knew then that our families would be forever intertwined by the bonds of friendship and love forged by our daughters. 
we felt proud that our daughters had made such great choices and confident that each would hold each other's hearts safely in their hands. There was no threat of harm, so there was no need to intervene. Their relationship was theirs, and we were honored to be invited to share in the journey. So perhaps my memory is not fuzzy at all, because maybe I never really knew the substance of their conversations or details of their youthful shenanigans behind what I would be beyond what I would overhear when I carted them from place to place or what some teacher would tell us at a school event or what I would see when I watched them on the marching band field or holding hands and skipping from place to place or in the bathroom as they dressed for some special occasion because what I did know is that they were safe, that they were free from harm. And from the very first moment I met Celinda at a band camp breakfast table, I knew she was someone special, that she would enrich all of our lives in ways that none of us could have predicted. And that my daughter had found her person. I took my love and I took it down I climbed a mountain and I turned around And I saw my reflection in the snow-covered hill child within my heart rise above can I sail through the changing ocean tides can I handle the seasons of my My name is Elena, and I was a student in Willem's lab, which is how Lindy and I met. When I met Lindy, 
She was 15 and I was 20. She was at the age where you discover the Beatles and feel like an adult, even though you're not quite there yet. And I saw myself in her every move. I too discovered the Beatles at 15 and being seven years younger than my closest sibling, immediately knew what it felt like to watch college kids live wildly in front of you, just out of reach. And so she quickly became my sidekick and I hers. We shared our love for musicals and the sound of guitars and above all, animals. We also both loved the water. She once took me on the laser, her little sailboat, and we immediately capsized. A story I know I share with many turtle crews of the past. This wasn't a problem for her because she was such a graceful swimmer, which I admired because I've personally always been more of a bottom dweller. <laughs> My first summer in Maryland, Lindy joined the crew to do field work. And she was not just along for the morning boat ride. She was a fierce and fearless worker, always eager to learn. She rose early on rainy mornings when she didn't have to, ready to pound stakes into mud from an unsteady rowboat at 15 years of age. This, is, this summer her leg was broken. I carried her. I loved her so much. We spent three summers laying on the dock in the darkness and heat of Maryland summer nights talking about the stars. And I got to watch her grow and more and more each year into the bright young woman I knew she was going to be as I was still growing right alongside her. The last time we did field work together, I took her with me to trek rattlesnakes. We hiked and sweat and fled from a giant thunderstorm holding metal equipment. <laughs> a story I'm sure neither of us told our moms. <laughs> Lindy was whimsical, shy but loud, smart, and wonderfully weird. And as a fellow weirdo, I believe all the best people are. <laughs> When I left school, I vowed we would never be out of touch because she had become more than my friend. She was my little sister. It feels impossible that she's gone, as we have all said. But she lives on forever in the hearts of those that loved her and the stories we get to share. I will not say do not weep, for not all tears are an evil. I will miss her for always. And I will always be her toe dash. Morning, friends and family of Lindy. I'm Courtney Kaywood, the forest manager of Zaleski State Forest. And I would like to thank the Rosenberg family for allowing me the honor to speak today. The forest crew and I had the absolute honor and privilege of working with Lindy for the last seven months. We want to share our deepest condolences to her family and loved ones. It's difficult to know where to begin when speaking about Lindy. She came into our world with her quiet, yet very inquisitive manner. It didn't take very long for her caring and passionate personality to shine through. I was so entirely impressed by Lindy since her first day working at Zaleski. We worked along the backpack trail that day and had to unload a skid steer along the road. Sean, one of the operators, and I started to loosen the binders and chains, and Lindy did not skip a beat, and she joined in without question. <laughs> I've worked with many seasonal staff throughout the years, and I've yet to experience that. 
That day I gave her a bucket of paint and a paintbrush and she was off to the races painting in trailblazes. Not long after working at Zaleski, Lindy found out that we have, you guessed it, dump trucks. And wow, was she ever excited. She let us all know that she had wanted a dump truck for years because she knew if she had one, everybody would be her friend, <laughs> which is absolutely true. And she always wanted to make new friends. One day she got to drive the dump truck around our parking lot and I can hear her say it was the raddest thing ever. It was so refreshing to see her excitement for our everyday tasks that we thought of as routine. She brought a new sense of wonder and joy to the work that we do. She also definitely brought humor into our lives. Whether it was finding an old teddy bear alongside a road giving it a bath and displaying it in our garage with a hat or hiding packets of jalapenos in the very mysterious places for us and the crew to find. We never knew what was coming from Lindy next to try and make us laugh. On the other hand, we could always tell when she was coming because you could always hear her with a song or a whistle or making turkey or chicken noises. Lindy's big heart also shined through. You could tell she genuinely cares about people. She once overheard a coworker mention his birth date and she quietly made note of the date. When his birthday came, she showed up to work with homemade apple pies. At that point, she had only worked with us for a few months but she made us feel like family. And in turn, we thought of her, of her as our little sister. Her thirst to learn everything she could about forestry was so inspirational. Lindy yearned to experience all that the division of forestry had to offer. She immediately jumped at the opportunity to help out with our logging crew. She braved bitter cold winter days to mark timber with our foresters, and she hiked many, many miles with pres on prescribed burns. Lindy even got one of our operators to show us how to show her how to run the skid steer, and in turn, she ended up teaching another employee how to operate it. Lindy's passion for life and quest for knowledge inspires me. It can be easy for work to, to become routine but the enthusiasm she brought to her job was so motivating. I saw how the work that we do became an all new and exciting experiences for her. I knew she thought of me as a mentor and I took that job to heart. I wanted to be, I wanted to be the best person I could be to show her it's possible to be a woman and a mother in the forestry and wildland fire field. I took great pride in showing her what I am capable of because I know how important it is to have a woman to look up to in this field. She reminded me of the importance of always doing your best because you never really know the impact you may have on someone. She made me proud every day through her hard work and determination. I never once heard her complain, even though she spent many hours painting endless amounts of wooden signs and busting up piles of frozen firewood. Lindy had such a big impact on our crew and her absence is so greatly felt. And on, the, on behalf of the Zaleski State Forest crew and the entire Department of Natural Resources, we are so greatly sorry for your loss and offer our deepest condolences. We're holding all of your family in our hearts. Lindy is one of us and will always be a part of our wildland family, wildland fire family. As I conclude, I would like to share the wildland firefighter prayer. Lord, as we take the challenge of wildland fire 
to protect our communities from situations dire. We accept the outcome be what it may, for our efforts are valiant every day. We staff the engines, aircraft, and crew, and our honest work is always true. Give us safety and a watchful eye. Help us see the success of our tribe. Watch our crew and closest friends and let us reach a good day's end. Should we fall, Lord bless our family. Let them know our love eternally. For though we know the world is hard, the work is hard, we do it not for public reward. Our love of home is always there. This is why my family is here. So now I'd like to read an expression of family gratitude to this community from the Rosenberg family. This is written by Willem. It takes a village to raise a child. Lindy's life experience has made it clear that this statement rings true. During the last two weeks, Kate, Derek, and I have been overwhelmed by your stories, generosity, and love, and have come to realize the role our village had in shaping her life. We want to express our deepest gratitude to friends, colleagues, teachers, bandies, and the community for all the kind words, meals, and support. Your generous donations to the Athens Conservancy will allow Selinda's friends and family a place to celebrate her sparkling spirit, where our community can experience the joy of being in the woods of Appalachia that she loves so dearly. Our deepest thanks to all. In addition to that, they wish especially to thank Jeff and Sherry Wilson for providing this space and this opportunity for this memorial. So in closing, there's lastly a couple of things I would say. Um, other ways to remember Selinda. You can write your own stories and post them at the site I mentioned earlier, www.forevermiss.com. Even better, you could put pen to paper and send your story to Kate. She has a post office box, 1048 Athens, Ohio, 45701. Stories about Selinda, as you engage with her and remember her, are absolutely the best gifts you can give to Kate, Willem, and Derek. And finally, donations in Selinda's name to the Athens Conservancy, which Willem mentioned, P.O. Box 2281, Athens, will go toward purchase of land hereabouts of ecological significance and distinctive biodiversity, and hopefully I'll live long enough to enjoy one of those. Thank you all.
Thank you.
Well, I met Derek when she was younger before I became friends with her parents at the library. <laughs> yeah, they were my best friends. Wow. And then, then I got to be friends with Rowan and Kate. So that doesn't do a lot of it anyway. Yeah, I mean, just a lot
Yeah. The guy with the motorcycle. Yeah. That was a nice. Break going back down there now. Break going back down there. <laughs> Hey, Winter. How are you? Oh, that's how you All right, man. Thanks, Phil. Oh, you're welcome, mate. I mean, I, I only had about five customers. Right, that's good. <laughs> Most people saw the flashing lights and got it themselves. 
It's what? Oh, did I? I know I told, I know I thanked you by one of your children, but I don't think I saw you. But I did, I gave you a Luxembourg thing, didn't I? Okay. So I don't know, it's amazing. Yeah, it's way easier to do than the glasses thing. Well, I recognize you by the dress that you wear to every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time I've seen Hey Derek. Did you get your shot? Which one did you get? Okay. Oh, that's an MRA.
know. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. I know. They didn't. I thought they were. Where I have had Gary, they were getting fed up. And then, like, I thought they were. It was okay. No, I literally do. I got it. 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 I got it.
really all you're getting is the center of the defense in the road and they're going to be able to Yeah. <laughs> 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 